So I was interrupted in the last video by my phone telling me my storage is full. So I was about to show you that, uh, oops, just knocked the CA over. I was about to show you that the CG tester will work something like this. The stop sets against the front leading edge of the wing. And so that tells you where the airplane should be positioned on the CG for optimal balance. So in this case, I think it's 29 millimeters from the leading edge. In any case, uh, yeah, I guess I can glue those in now. I don't have to worry about them anymore. So I'll put a bit of glue in there. And I'll of course make sure these go in relatively square because they... There we go. And not a bad idea to just put a little bit of a bevel on that edge there, just so you have kind of a reasonable point for the plane to balance on. Okay, so that guy sits there. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Not one stand flat, of course. Oh, that's okay. Actually, it'll be fine. Okay, and I obviously want to do them so that they are, so they sit like this. So I could put these two guys together, I could pin them down on a building board, for example, and then balance the model on that. So I'll just do this guy as well. There we go. And he's going to be like that, so I want some glue right there. Okey so far so good with the jigs, everything seems to be fine. That guy gets glued in there. Okay, good. So that's that. So those two will be like that for balancing the model. And the slot here, right here, is wide enough that the airplane, the fuselage, will fit right in between there and actually rest on the wing. Okay. Alrighty, so the jigs have been built. I'll put those aside now for a few minutes while I move on to the next step. This one here, I haven't mentioned this, this is to set the stab tilt, so I will use that as well along with the cradles. Okay, I'll move that little bit of debris off the building board. So the next step is to just do the wing. Um, and so for a very quick wing, basically all I'm going to do is cut through the bottom along these lines and uh, in fact I could just use these lines yeah that's what I will do uh, I'll just score you know these are partial cuts so they don't go very deep they maybe go half a millimeter quarter mil or something deep into the wood I usually use them just a mark of text that's what I'm gonna do here because this is the quick and dirty version that you're not going to spend a ton of time on. I just wanted to get it enough so I could crack it like that. See? Don't want any more than that. I wonder if I could... Uh, see, this side is still not deep enough to crack it. So I'm just going to run my blade along that line. They're symmetrical, so it doesn't matter if you flip it over. There you go. Run it along the line and crack it. And you want this to be... So the fibers here you know, a quarter of the fibers are uncut now, they're just bent, right? And uh, what I'm going to do then is once I've set this, I'll actually put glue on the top surface, which will form kind of a, a brace in a way, and then I'll, once those are dried, I'll just run glue along that cr crack open joint, and the glue that solidifies in the joint will prevent it from flexing down. That's the idea, at least. So, to do this, I'm going to just set that, so this is flat on the surface. Just tip that guy up until it runs into the, there's a little stop on the edge of the dihedral brace here. So you want it to run into that stop, bang, like that. And next step is to run some glue. Along there. Good. And if you want, you can sort of smear that around a bit. Okay. 
you know, again, this, this version is really aimed at very quick and dirty, you know, granddad sits down with the grand, granddaughter or grandson, they knock one of these little things together in a, in an hour and blammo, they're out to the school field or the garden, chucking them around and having fun. Minimizing the amount of patience required. One good trick, of course, is to put a bit of a kicker. You'll notice I don't like to spray kicker. I, I don't know if you guys have this. I actually get it. If I inhale kicker fumes or, part, or, or the particulate from the spray, I get a bad headache. And so I actually end up most of the time just pulling the, uh, opening it up and just letting it soak into the wood. So what this should do now is when I pull this guy out of here, it moves a little. Oh, the kicker hasn't fully set yet, that's why. Maybe I should put a bit more on there. Looks like I only got it in the edge. There we go, now it'll be set. Alright, so it's not necessarily the prettiest way to make a glider wing. You can certainly find nicer ways to do it. I'm sure if you're a purist or a real perfectionist, if you're not uh, trying to get it knocked out for a kid, um, you can make yourself a little tool and sand the correct angles into the joints and all that good stuff. See, now it's perfect. All right, so I can flip that over. Run glue in the joint. And that will be as strong as you like. Same thing again. I can just... Uh, Grab my kicker and just run it right along there, and that will be set. Okay, yep, feels nice and strong, nice and stiff. Same procedure for the other joint here. Run it up to the stop. Don't actually even need two dihedral braces with this setup. You might want to use two anyway if you want to, like pin this part here flat to the board then have a brace set in here and a brace set in there you move this along here so you could so you could you could set it up this way right voila and you know do all the gluing in one operation if you like uh, doesn't seem to be important you could skin this cat several different ways this is the bottom line Okay, again, ran my little CA. Just gonna even it out a bit here. And this CA kind of acts like a joint strengthener anyway, in case it crashes and all and whatnot. Which, if you're out flying uh, with kids, is basically inevitable. There we go. So that kicker now solidifies the. Glue there. Should be able to pull this out without any movement. Yeah, it barely moves at all. Gonna run some glue down that joint like that. And where's my piece of scrap? Get my scrap here. And the kicker is probably already working on that. Uh, the glue in the joint there. I'll just add to it there a bit more. Okay, so that's the wing pretty much done. Good and strong, no problems there. Okay, so the next step will be to glue the wing to the fuselage. You can see that I've notched it here for you. So that just slots right onto the fuselage should be a nice tight fit. Kind of pinch the fuselage balsa a little bit. Just dry fitting it there. So there you go. That's the dry fit. You can see that it's nice and tight. Uh, question will be how to get it square. And so uh, that's where I will use this little brace. This slots nice onto the fuselage. And you can, hold, you can see there that that'll make sure the fuselage is square to the wing. Okay. 
when the time comes. So the way I'm going to handle that is I will just pull that off of there. I'm going to run some glue right down this. Try to get a bit in this joint here and back here. And then I'm going to squeeze that into position. And before the glue sets, I'm going to just hold it so that it's square. Might actually bring myself to it here. Yep, square enough for my needs. So there you go, wing is already glued. Oops, I can see now that I actually glued in a a little bit of uh, camber, accidentally. That can't hurt. Um, so there you go. Wing is glued to the fuselage. That was quick, right? No problems. And you know it's perfectly square this way because the notches are set there. So you don't have to worry about the, the angle of the fuselage relative to the wing. It's square. Right here. Next step. Um, doing the stabilizer, so we'll see if, the, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm, I'm hoping it'll work nicely. I'm not going to do anything to this. Now, depending on how deeply you care about performance, you might want to round off, for example, the leading edge and trailing edge of the wing. You could even do that after, like, you know, I've assembled it here. So I could come along now and just put in, uh, just round that off, you know, help performance a little bit. So that's possible. And you could take it as far as you and your patients and your uh, fellow flyers, your students are willing to go, okay? The airplane will fly without that. It'll just fly incrementally better. The more of an airfoil you have here, the better it's gonna fly, of course, okay? But like I said before, for kids who just wanna go out and chuck it as hard as they can and shoot it in every direction you can imagine, um, obviously that's less of a concern. I just did say that they shoot in every direction you can imagine. So here, this, so now because they don't want you to sue me when uh, one of your kids shoots another kid in the eye with his catapult glider, uh, please be aware that catapult gliders are dangerous to your health. You can lose an eye to a catapult glider if it's shot straight into someone's eye or face. Uh, so I strongly advise that uh, if you're out with the kids firing these things around with catapults that you uh, give them a safety lesson beforehand. Um, and you keep an eye on them, you make sure that they're not behaving in a way that is uh, detrimental to the health and well-being of their fellows. Uh, with this one again, you can just uh, real quick round off the leading edge. Just so that the Drag isn't completely atrocious. You know, it's really just a few seconds of work, so it's not too bad. Kid might even enjoy making some bolts of dust. I'll even do the trailing edge here. The nice version, of course, a lot more time is spent on getting all these thicknesses and everything sorted out, and I will do that as a video as well. That one, of course, will be more involved and be done in a series of steps. So there you go, just a minimalist treatment to the, the stab. Okay, alrighty. Again, I'm going to use the notches. I can see that I should cut the notches a bit deeper on this fuselage because they're a tad on the shallow side. Okay, so what I'm going to do, that's enough to hold it in there, what I'm going to do is set it up so that I can use this stab tilt gauge to set the tilt on the stab. So the idea is here you set this one in about the position of the center of gravity, so in thereabouts, and you set this guy about a centimeter ahead of the stabilizer, and then you can set the model down on these two and it should sit nice and flat. And then if you insert this, this gauge here with the left side of the stab, left tip of the stab 
against the gauge. That should put in a 1 32nd stab tilt. Okay, so there you go. So now I should be able to run my glue along that seam there. And when I pick the whole thing up, I should have a slight hint of stab tilt built into the stab. So again here, I'll put some on the other side. Just going to have to see that it's soaked through. That's good. Again, I'm going to give it the kicker treatment. Alright, it's a moment of truth here. Let me pull these guys off and look to see if I've got stab tilt. I do. I have about a 30 second of stab tilt built in. So if you can see that, there you go. You can see the, if you compare the stab to the trailing edge of the wing, you can see that the left tip is up slightly. And so that means that the airplane will glide. It'll turn to the left. That's because there's a small component of the lift vector from the stab is now pointing in, uh, sorry, it's, which way is it pointing? Uh, it's basically going to drive the stab to the right, or the tail of the airplane to the right, right? So yeah, so that lift vector is pointing, you know, the opposite way, right? So it's pushing uh, to the left, which pushes the stab to the right and makes the airplane glide gently to the right, okay? And with, the, with such a small amount of tilt, you get a a gentle left hand glide turn. And the reason we're going left here is because this is set up for right handed people. I'm actually a lefty, but I'm kind of ambidextrous, so I will launch this with my right hand at the tail, left hand holding the elastic, and then the model will be banked and pointing up steeply to the right. And then when it fires off, it'll make this big looping, arching climb, and then to the right, and then it'll start to glide to the left. Okay, so the last step before we uh, do things like CG is the fin. And so the fin, again, we want just a slight hint of left glide turn. So that means that the leading edge of the fin is going to be set half a millimeter right of center, just to give a hint of uh, left glide turn. And so along with that, I'm actually gonna bevel off the right side of the fin. I'm just going to leave the left side flat so it's got something vaguely in the neighborhood of a crude airfoil. Notice I'm not even bothering to finish sand with fine sandpaper, nothing. The emphasis here is going to be speed and fun for the kids. You know, the next step after doing this will be to get out the Sharpies or the colored markers and have them go nuts decorating their models with all kinds of vibrant colors. So here, I'm just going to do this by, I'm going to run a bead of CA along there. And I'm going to set my fin on there using the notch stop. And I'm going to have my fin set just a hair to the right of center. So on the order of half a millimeter or even less. You can always add a little bit more. And so then I'm going to check for squareness. Let's have a look. It's hard to do this now with the. Oh, it's tilted. You can see it's tilted, so I'm just gonna cant it over a little bit. There you go, that's pretty darn square. Square enough for this at least. Okay, so voila, there's the basic glider. Uh, and Basically, it's a half hour build to get that far. Now, uh, so the jigs help a lot. I can see that they work pretty well. I'm happy with them. Uh, now we can try playing with the CG here. What we expect, of course, is that uh, the CG should need to go. So if I put this on the cradle, it's going to be tail heavy, of course. 
as you can see that if I just need to add nose weight to this and it'll balance. So I'm going to end it there, go find some clay and I'll be back.